Well, hello, everybody. Welcome in. We have a few people joining us from all over, actually. Um, welcome on in to Watch Me Wednesday. How are you all today? Hi, everybody. Hi, Gail. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Lisa, Jean, Kyra. How are you all doing? I am back today with a really cool tutorial for you, um, but I can get you be while people are joining in, and if you share the post, then people can join in. While we're getting ready uh, to do the tutorial, I'm going to update you a little bit because last time I told you I was involved in a research study at Mayo Clinic. It actually gets me a second work workout uh, three times a week. Today, or actually this week, they had me going up to 10,000 feet in altitude in the hyperbaric chamber. Kind of fun. I'm a little tired, so probably after this I might take a nap. I don't know. But um, I call it my, um, my uh, spin class at altitude in the chamber of secrets because it's this, you know, this hyperbaric chamber and I get to spin for 30 minutes. So it's kind of fun. Um, I feel like I'm doing my part contributing to science. So Plus, I'm getting a workout too. So I'm getting fit while I'm doing it. So I can't complain. Anyway, welcome in everybody. Welcome, welcome. So if you can, hit that share button. This is going to be a pretty cool um, uh, tutorial because it is paper piecing. And I know I've done paper piecing um, tutorials before. But this is a really down and dirty, easy pattern to paper piece. Especially if you are a beginner and you haven't tried it yet you're looking to try paper piecing, you've kind of been a little bit ambivalent about it, this is a great one to do. This pattern right here is my Pass Mountain pattern. A lot of people might be asking why I've called it Pass Mountain. Um, we like to hike a lot, as you all know, and uh, the park that we live close to, um, Usury Mountain Park, uh, the big mountain in it is called Pass Mountain. And the way that I arrange the blocks makes it look like I'm climbing, it makes it almost look like stair steps, make it like I'm climbing. So I'm climbing past mountain. That's what I thought of when I made it. And the, and it's ma the, the original uh, version here was made in my Electric Desert fabric collection. So it was appropriate for me to name it after one of the places that we like to frequent as far as hiking is concerned because it's my electric desert fabric. I needed to name it after something uh, that we climb, which is Pass Mountain. So that's where it got it name, its name from. But it is a uh, super easy pattern. It is now on my website. And yes, I do have the links already in the description. So if you're on YouTube, it's below me. If you're on Facebook, it's either above me or below me. It depends on your screen. Um, right now, it's only available as a PDF download um, for the time being. It will. I haven't sent it to print yet, but it is ready for you to use. So this is the pattern as a PDF download. You get everything plus the paper foundation for you to make your copies. Um, so it is available for you, plus all the supplies that I'm working with are also available on my site as well. So you can link to that, you can download the pattern, and you can um, uh, work with it. But I decided to do this one. I've cut out all my pieces. If you've seen my post, um, I've cut out my pieces. They're all ready to go. I've um, So far I've done six blocks, uh, just because of time and I wanted to prep for you. But I am using, I'm gonna switch to the other camera so that you can see. Um, some of the fabrics that I'm using. It looks like I'm kind of cockamamie here. Hang on a second. Um, whoops, there we go. Okay, so I'm using my, my new collections, my um, Color Splash, and I'm using my Opposites Attract. So you're gonna see some of the white and the black in there as well. Um, so I thought it would be fun, and actually these blocks look super fun. Um, I did, Put a post up of uh, two of 
two ideas as far as layouts go. Um, if you wanted to change up the layout a little bit. But anyway, the block is super easy. It is a quarter square triangle, but each um, section is a varying width. So it makes it a little on the wonky side, not quite wonky, but it makes it a little um, uneven, if you will, because they're not all the same width fabrics. I do in the instructions, I do give you all your cutting instructions. Um, so you pre-cut all your fabrics out so you can see that I have them pre-cut here into the lengths and the widths that you need them to create the block. And then I have them set up for me so that I can chain piece my block together. If you've taken a paper piecing class from me before, either online or in person, this is a really critical um, thing to do to get you organized and ready to rock and roll with your block is getting them set up in the order that they're going to be pieced. So my first section is the first one on top and they are on top of one another so that you um, finish that piece first before you move on to the next section. And then obviously the last section that you're going to put on the block is the last one here. Now I'm going to demo with two foundation pieces today. Um, so I've, I've already made all my copies for the entire, um, for the entire quilt. So I will be making, I will be making the entire quilt, but for today's purposes, I'm going to demo with just two foundation pieces. And you will note on my foundation pieces, what I do on these to make it easy for you is I do put your, so this is template A. There's only one in this pattern and we just repeat it. And this is why it's a, another great beginner pattern because you only have one foundation throughout the entire quilt. So you are repeating the same thing over and over again, which for a beginner is fantastic because you will get the process easier if you're repeating the same block over and over again. I give you your sections on each. So you have, the, in this block, you have 17 pieces of fabric you're gonna be putting on. So it goes from A1 to A2 to A3, four, five, six, etc. Paper piecing is always, you're always moving in numeric order from one to two, two to three, etc never going in a different order. So if you skipped from A1 to A3, you've missed A2, so you're not, your block's not gonna work out right. Plus, on this sheet, you'll also see that I designate which fabric goes where. So A1 is fabric number six. A2 is fabric number three. A4 is fabric number four. This is why I like to have a fabric swatch page. So you can see what I did here. When I chose my fabrics, first thing I did was I put in order fabric one through nine, because there's nine fabrics in this particular pattern that when I, when I did the original, I wanted nine fabrics to create that illusion of the stair step. So when I chose the fabrics for the version I'm making today, I chose them very carefully because the overall effect that I wanted and in the end of this one is I want that um, stair step effect again, but I want it with the black and the white in this. So you'll see that and, and, and you know, and it may, it may end up that you might see it more with the blue. I'm not sure. Um, but I wanted that part in there. So I carefully placed them where the, they as fabric five and six. I, carefully place the white and the black in there. So always make that, all I did was snip a little piece of the fabric off and I glued it down with a glue stick on the paper. So I have this to refer to, so I know which fabrics are going to go where. That's important for you to do. So you're gonna have your templates, you're gonna, I printed them off on Carol Doak's newsprint, which of course I do carry. Um, I find this easier than copper, uh, copper, copy paper, because copy paper is super thick. These guys here, this is important, you get yourself all set up, and then we get started. So 
So I'm going to show you how to get started. I'm not going to go through the entire block because um, paper piecing, we're going to, I'm going to chain piece and, um, and here I'm, I, like I said, I'm only doing two. So in each stack, you'll have two pieces of fabric. If I was chain piecing four at a time, I would have four of my section A1s or I'd have six if I was doing six and likewise. So section A2, I would have four. If I was doing four, section A3, I would have uh, four of that. So you have whatever amount of template sheets you're working with or foundation sheets you're working with in each stack, okay? So we're gonna work with two today. I'm not going to show you the entire block. I paper pieced before we came uh, live, I did two um, blocks. I got them to a certain point because I want you to see how to end the block. But two blocks took me about a half an hour to 40 minutes to do. Now, typically I would chain piece more than um, two blocks at a time, but I wanted to get them to get, get it to a certain point. And I am going to show you before I get started, I'm going to show you um, these, are the, these are four blocks um, that I've done. And I kind of, the, the, the post that I did the other day, I... Um, played with them just a little bit. I played with the uh, layout here a little bit. So I know you're not seeing the entire thing here, but you can play with the layout once all of your blocks are complete. Um, you can turn them, rotate them different ways to see what you like, uh, etc. So once you get it all done and you get them all up on the uh, design wall, you have lots of options. I like the um, version behind me. So that's how I'm going to make this, this one that I'm working on. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so we have our templates. And the first thing we're going to do, the very first um, piece of fabric is our A1. So we're turning our papers to the wrong side. And let me zoom in just a little bit for you. So you can see a little, oh, not on me, hang on a second. Let me get me out of the picture and let's zoom in here so you can see a little bit better, okay? Now, we are going to be placing this very first fabric on that very first piece. So I am using this uh, repositionable glue, which again, I, I do have on my website if you need it. So this glue is nice, it comes, comes off, um, it's actually almost like a post-it note. So I am placing my fabric on that first corner. Now, you will note that on this foundation piece, I have cut down the foundation piece just to within about a quarter inch of that outside line. And my fabric is butting up against the edge there. It's not, it's overhanging maybe a little bit there, but you, you need it to just cover that square and out to the um, seam allowance there. So that's where I'm covering. I'm going to go ahead and put some glue there. I'm going to put that square on and then I am done with the glue. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. Now, we turn these over because we're going to be working from this side of the block. We're going to be going to line one, okay? So line one, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take a piece of template plastic or something very thin but sturdy you need, and you're going to fold back your paper, okay? And then you're going to take your add-a-quarter ruler. Let me just move this up a little bit here. You're going to take your add a quarter ruler, and I do have these. I have the 12 inch by, I think it's one and a half inch. This is a thicker one that I have. I, it was a longer ruler that I cut in half. But if you're not familiar with an add a quarter ruler, it has like, I don't know if you can see there, it has like a little lip here that is exactly one quarter inch, and it holds on to that piece of template plastic there so it doesn't move. That way I get a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take, trim that down to one quarter inch. In the same step, I'm gonna take my next piece of fabric, which is my A2. I am going to line it up with the edge of that 
seam allowance that I just created and the edge of the block. And basically that A2 is covering, I don't know if you can see through this or not, but it's covering, let me get my pen out here. So this is where it's got to cover. It's got to cover basically, oops, come on, you can work. It's got to cover this area here. It's got to cover that area. So my fabric is all the way out here. So, but I got to really come out another quarter inch because we've got a seam allowance too. So it's covering this area. And I have calculated out for you in the pattern how large these are supposed to be so that you don't have to guess. So it will cover that area for you. So once you've got it in position, then I'm going to take my fabric glue pen and this works in place of pins, which I love. And you just pulling back that quarter inch seam allowance and putting a little bit of glue in there. So now that's ready to sew. And I'm just going to set that aside. And what I do to one, I do the other one. So this is chain piecing. Okay. So I'm doing the same thing to the other. I glued the first piece on to one foundation sheet. I glue that found, uh, glue that fabric on to the other one as well before I move to the next step. So I'm folding and trimming and then adding piece number two. I did it to the first one. Now I'm doing it to the second. So what I do to one, I do to all of my pieces. If I was chain piecing four or six of these, I would do the same step to all of them before I move to the next step. So now my next step, I'm gonna switch cameras. My next step is to actually sew. Okay, so now we're over here at the sewing machine. And there's a couple things you need to know in here. You don't necessarily need a quarter inch uh, foot. I do have my quarter inch foot on because I just uh, was piecing something else that I needed it so I didn't change it out. You can have a, an open toe foot if you want so that you can see the line clearer. So that's my quarter inch foot on my Viking. Um, but uh, you could put a, uh, an A foot on if you have a Viking. You can put that on. Uh, or something that you can see the line on the piece of paper because that'll be important. The other thing is I have a Microtech 7010 needle in, which is a sharp, sharp kind of like a razor. So it's very fine on that and it'll help to perforate the papers a little better. I also set my stitch length to um, 1.5. Um, so the stitch length is 1.5 on the machine and that is because you want that stitch length secure so you want the smaller stitches so that when you go to pull the papers off you're not pulling your stitches out because you went through all that work you don't want to pull those stitches out so you need it more secure if you have a 1.6 or a 1.4 on your machine choose the 1.6 don't go to 1.4 then um, also use a um, 50 weight thread. I use um, Arfil's Dove Gray, uh, I believe it's 2600, is the 50 weight thread that I use. Okay, so let's get sewing. All right, so now you're going to open up your foundation and you're going to slide it in here. And we're looking at line one, okay? And where we're going to start on line one is we are going to start about, I made a little mark here. Let's see, let me make it bigger so you can see. I made a mark there. We're going to start our stitch right about there. So I'm not starting right at the intersection. I am starting off of that intersection because I want it to be secured with the next line that I sew. So I'm going to start right about there. And I'm going to sew, and I'm going to sew right off the paper. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip that. And then if, because I'm chain piecing, I'm going to sew my next one on. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to start off of that and then come ahead and sew right off that paper. Clip it back. And now I'm going to switch back to the other camera so you can see what we do next. Okay, so here we are. We've got our pieces already sewn and the next step is to press. Now I don't have my iron here so I'm going to go ahead and do a finger press. Here we want those fabrics nice and pressed 
And yes, I iron, I don't finger press. I do iron and I use a dry iron. I don't like to use a steam iron with papers because it can make them wet and it can make them shrink. So that's just another little handy tip. So the next thing we're gonna do, we press it, but now the next step is to add our next piece of fabric. So we're gonna flip these papers over again and then we move on to line number two. Okay, so we move to line number two. Now, remember we started off of here, so the, the um, stitch goes beyond that line that we're gonna sew. So we're taking that whole fabric back, just like we, or the piece of template, just like we did before, folding it on that template plastic. But you see how the fabric sticks there because we sewed through the line. That's okay. You're just gonna hold the paper down and you're gonna pull that fabric back. And it does rip away from the, um, the foundation and that's okay. Let me just, I'm gonna zoom in just a little more so you can, oh, I can't zoom in anymore. I don't think I can. That's about as far as I can zoom. So, but you can see the little tear in that and that's okay. That's what you want. You want this to lay flat. So the next thing you can do is lay down that add a quarter ruler on there and then trim it down, okay? Then you will add that next piece of fabric. And again, that next piece is gonna cover the next section. So it's covering from here to here all the way to the edge of the template. So it's covering this piece. And you can see, just by looking at the piece of fabric, how much bigger that is than that section. That's super important. And I've done all the calculations for you. These pieces are big enough for you to cover your sections, okay? So you can see that this one will overhang this section here, and it also will overhang this way. That's why we create this quarter inch seam allowance, and all we have to do is match up those edges, like so, oops. It's hard for me from this angle to see what I'm doing because I'm not right over top of it, so I apologize. Um, then we put our little bit of glue in here to keep it secure until we sew it. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. Now remember, what I do to one, I do to all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna fold this back, just like we did before. Let me pull it up here a little more. So you can see, just like we did before, make a nice crease, pull that fabric away from the newsprint. Let me put my cap on there. And then you're going to go ahead, make your quarter inch seam allowance and you are going to add your next piece, lining up those edges, and putting in a little bit of fabric glue to keep it secure. Now I know a lot of you are gonna have questions, so hold them to the end and then make sure you type them in and I will answer questions at the end. So let's switch views again. So now you can see we're going to open this up and we are going to start basically off the edge of the paper because we're coming from this side and we're going to end about here. So we're going to end about here. So we're coming past that line. Okay, we want to cross it and come past it. Okay, so go ahead, sew that line. You're sewing right on that line, coming past it and clipping it. Let me hold that up so that you can see. So can you see where I sewed that? Uh, let's see the better light. So I sewed it all the way up past that, okay? Then we get the next one. Remember what I do to one, I do to all of them. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew that down and come past. Clip that, and then again, if I had more pieces I was working on, I would just um, continue to add those in here and sew them. Now, we're back here, and again, we, we are going to go ahead and we are going to press, so that's the next step. So now you can see we are starting to get our quarter log cabin. And basically the process is the same. You just keep repeating that same process. 
you're going to keep flipping it over and you're going to go we went we already did line one line two now we go to line three fold it trim it add the piece glue it sew it press come back fold trim add the piece glue it sew it come back so that's basically the order and you can see in the pile now let me just zoom out just a little bit hang on in the pile I've already gotten rid of these first two piles so I've already gotten rid of well three piles so I've gotten rid of a1 a2 and a3 so they're gone so that's the, the process. You're going to get rid of your piles as you go along, and that's important. You're going to work your way. You can actually stack these all on top of one another if you, if you want. I did it this way just so I can give you that visual um, that all those fabrics are there. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to um, fast forward ahead here, okay, because I could sit here and do this whole thing, but I don't know that you want to sit here for 45 minutes. So I'm going to show you to, down to the very last piece here. So I've pieced these guys together. I've pieced two together. This has one last piece to add on. So you can see this piece is going to cover this side. So it's the same process. I'm on A17. Let me zoom in just a little bit uh, so you can see me again. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we are going to take that template plastic. This is the very last piece. Take that template plastic and you're going to fold that, la that piece back. And again, your fabric is on that newsprint. You're going to rip it away from there. And this one's got my thread is all hung up on there. That's okay. We're just going to clip that thread a little bit. Now that lays nice and flat. And um, my, this ruler, unfortunately, is not long enough, so I'm going to slide it along. I'm putting that at a quarter ruler on, trimming that quarter inch away. And then I'm going to take my last piece, and I'm going to place my foundation sheet on top, lining up that seam allowance that I just made with that piece. And I'm going to take my fabric glue, peel back that quarter inch seam allowance, just put some glue in here to hold it together until I get it to the sewing machine. Now remember, if I had others to do, I would do them all first, set them all up just like this so that I can chain piece them in the sewing machine. So now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. We're going to sew this one, and this one we are just going to sew all the way from one end to the other because this is the very last piece we're going to go start off the foundation block and we're going to go all the way to the other side and off the block i'm going to clip that and we're almost done do you believe it so now you're going to see we've got the block complete. So this one, obviously, you want to press, and you want to press with your um, iron. I've done that here on this block, and I'm going to show you how to trim it up once you are done with that. So let me zoom out so that you can see the entire block. And let's zoom out a little bit so you can see the block. Now, once you're all set and done, you're going to take a regular ruler and you are going to trim right on that outside dotted line. So that's the way my foundations are. They have the outside line is your um, trim down line to get your block and that's your quarter inch. You can lay, if you so desire, the quarter inch line on your ruler with the line, the quarter inch line on the block, if that makes it easier for you. And then all you have to do is you're trimming the, that, that outside edge of that ruler will end up right on the um, dotted line. So then you don't have to worry about it. So you're lining up that, let me zoom in just a little bit. Hang on. 
That way you can see me trimming it. So there's that quarter inch line. I'm lining up on that solid line there and then just trimming it down and doing the same with all four sides. Being super careful to trim down. Then you have your completed block. Isn't it pretty? It's so much fun. I love my new collection. I, I love this block in my new collection. I think it's just a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so that is how you complete the, the block. And at this stage of the game, you can go ahead and take the papers off. And the papers just come off really easy because remember you use that, that um, 1.5. See how nice and easy that came off? All I did was bend it back, creased it a little bit, and just peeled it away. It just comes off super easy, no problem. So at this point, because now it's a block, you can take that off. You don't want to um, sew blocks together with the paper on it because it adds extra bulk in it. And then um, you, you, you might not end up with a quarter inch seam allowance. So always take the paper off when they're at this stage. So that is the down and dirty tutorial for paper piecing on this easy uh, block for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I would love to know if you have any questions. So let's see. Uh, I see Deb has, what pattern is this? So this Deb, I don't know if you're just joining in, but it is my past mountain pattern. The, um, at the beginning, I did say the link is uh, in the description. It is uh, above me or below me, but here is the pattern. Let me switch to the other view. So you can see there's the pattern. It is um, right now available only as a PDF download at the moment because I haven't sent it off to print, but it is my past mountain pattern. So you can get it instantaneously. It comes with everything, including your template uh, for your paper foundation. You just have to make your copies. It gives you your yardage amounts. Um, my patterns are uh, all color graphics, so you'll have everything in there. And you always have this uh, video will live on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, I would so appreciate if you could definitely give me a thumbs up, like, like the video on YouTube, um, if you can. Uh, and if you can make a comment, that'd be great. I do answer the comments and also on Facebook too, if you can like it and give it comments, that would be awesome. Um, let's see, I'm going to look and see if there's any other questions. You are welcome. You are welcome, Deb. All the, um, tools and supplies too are on my website. Let's see. Laura says, let's see, is the color splash? Yes. Color splash has been on my website now for about three, four weeks. So Color Splash, which is the fabric I used here, and Opposites Attract, which is the black and white fabric. They are both available on my website as fat quarter packs and yardage. Uh, if some of it sold out, I will be getting um, another shipment in October, but I still have most of it there. Um, so if you're wanting yardage or fat quarters, it is there. You can get it, and I have the link I also think I put the link for the fabric in the description. So check, check that link. Thank you, Laura, for asking that question. Let's see. Um, let's see. We've got some other questions here. Um, I'm having trouble with when peeling papers with stitches on the end coming loose. Any hints? So stitches on the ends. Um, my one question would be is, are you decreasing your stitch length to 1.5? That could be an issue. If you're not decreasing that stitch length to 1.5, your stitches aren't going to be as secure. So when you're pulling that newsprint off, you're tugging at that. If you're continuing to have that issue, you could do a little back tack there. Um, but remember, if it's around the edges of your block here, um, you're going to be trimming down too. So... 
um, unless you're peeling off the papers. Well, no, you can't be. So forget what I just said. So you could do a little back tack, but I'm thinking that if you're getting getting the stitches pulling out, your your um, stitches may not be so tight. If you they are tight, do a little back tack. See if that help, happens. I typically don't do a back tack, but try that out and see if it helps. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, Lisa, awesome. Lisa made Lisa made this pattern, um, and she that's true. And thank you, Lisa, for mentioning it. I appreciate it. She made four blocks. She didn't want to make the whole quilt. She made four blocks, and she made a really cool looking pillow. I don't know, Lisa, if you could. Um, attach a um, photo to your comment so that others can see the pillow. That would be awesome. The pillow is gorgeous that she made and it really matches her. She sent me the picture a while ago. Um, it matches her uh, furniture. So it's really cool. Uh, let's see what other comments and questions we have. Um, uh, let's see. I use 1.5 on Janome for paper piecing. Awesome. So Janome has 1.5. Sue says, sorry, I missed no, watch it. No problem, Sue. You can watch it anytime you like. Uh, let's see. I'm scrolling back to see some more patterns or to see some more questions. Sorry. Um, hey, Betsy. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions. Questions. So I'll give you another uh, minute or so. If you have any questions, type them in there. Um, if not, you can always ask questions later. But remember, this video will still be in. It, it'll be in Facebook. I pin it to the top of the page, so it'll be there until my next. At the top of the my um, Canton Village Quilt Books page, um, it'll be at the top of that page for two weeks until I do my next. Uh, Watch me Wednesday, but it will forever be on my Facebook page under videos and on my YouTube page. It will always be there as well. And YouTube is free. So if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love it if you did. That would be awesome. And um, let's see, I can't, I can't post a photo here. What? Lisa, we can get a photo there. I know we can. We can work on that. Anyway. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Uh, I will be back again in two weeks. Uh, next week I have off from my Watch Me Wednesday and hopefully by then I'll actually have a quite, quite a few more blocks, maybe even the top complete. I did, by the way, complete the Lynx um, quilt top and um, I had asked everybody, I did like a little poll, I asked everybody if they thought I should put a border or not and the overwhelming response was, no border, and I actually, that was, that was the way that I was leaning for no border because I put a lot of the black on the outside and I believe I'm sticking with no border. So now I just gotta get it quilted and uh, bound. So there's that. Anyway, thank you for joining me everyone. I so appreciate you stopping in and saying hello. Um, what is Kyra saying? Facebook does not allow photos to be posted on the live video streams because some people post, oh, well, when it's not live anymore, Lisa, you can post it. I'm pretty sure you can post it when it's not live. So I'm going to pin it to the top of the page, Lisa. You can post your photos then, I think. So anyway, have a fantastic couple weeks. Keep checking in on me. I'm going to be posting things, um, all the time. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me there. You can follow me on Facebook here. And I'm constantly posting every day quilty pictures and inspiration for you. Um, and I hope you love it all. I hope. Anyway, happy quilting. I will see you in two weeks. Thank you for joining me. Love you guys. Bye.